Hello everybody, my name is Jorge Luis Duñez and on this time I'm making this video for the teaching and techniques class and I'm gonna be talking about the small groups and partners working in an EFL classroom. Okay, so the topic for today is how effectively can be used the application of the small groups and partners in the EFL classroom. Okay, so small groups and partners, basically one of the concepts that we have here is that working in small groups gives students a chance to practice with the higher order thinking skills that instructors love to teach. That means that the students is gonna be are going to be like um, basically thinking about all the activities and producing more ideas and more ideas. So and between them in the group, they are going to be sharing what they are thinking and they are going to come to become in a conclusion about these um, these activities and the topics that the teacher is going to to give them. And also, small groups work can range from short informal exercise form to formalized problem sets that make up the majority of the class. As I said previously, basically, the they are going to be using like a lot of exercise examples. They are going to be using also the different materials that that the teacher is going to give them. So, contrary to the popular belief, instructors can incorporate small group work into large lectures, as well as the seminars and discussion sections. Uh, and also, I think that everything becomes to to how the the students wants to want to to interpret the information that the teacher is gave them, but. Basically, one of the things that I'm talking about here is the process of the many ideas that the, each of the students in, a, in the small groups are going to be having. So that makes us to become in a, in a sense of a, determine the, the, how the skills of the students are going to be developed. So, for example, if you given the, if you are given to the students, example, uh, in, in each small groups, for example, you divide uh, the the class in four in four small groups, and then you gave them uh, topics about mathematics. Let's say mathematics becomes like about sums, addi additions, uh, rests, divisions, and multiplications. So they are going to be giving you the a lot of ideas how they are, how they are going to achieve all each of the goals that you are that you are asking to the students to to catch here so basically they're going to be sharing a lot of ideas they are going to be talking about this but at the end of this presentation i'm going to be talking about some small disadvantage about these small groups and partners so let's continue so here I added also the presentation about the benefits of work in small groups. Uh, basically, I just added four of them. I know that we're going to have a lot of benefits of working uh, in a small group. So the first one is think, write, pair, share. The second one is three-step interview. The third one is class debates. And the fourth one is the problem-based learning. So as you can see, I have given here like some quick explanations about each of these benefits that we're going to happen uh, by working in small groups and partners. So think right the parents share uh, consists, consists in, in the students will use gestures to certain the locations of items in the classrooms. So also students will express needs and ideas. The three step interview is basically, as the name said, three steps. So here I just added like a quick explanation, but I'm going to explain this in another way. So the students will engage verbal interaction in, in English. Students will use simple questions to elicit the information needed. So the three-step interview is going to be like, OK, so I'm going to interview you and all the rest of the, of the partners on my small group. So you are going to be interviewed in the way that you are give, going to give me your first, who are you? The second one, 
what are you doing here in this group in this group and the third one how are we going to conclude that your ideas are going to be beneficial for our group the third one is class debates basically as the name says this is very important i think that this benefit is one of the the best ones that we want to have here because the students will ask questions which generate descriptive terms the students will use verbal interactions to resolve the conflict so basically class debates it doesn't mean to to fight each one another because you don't think the same as the as your partner or maybe as another person in your group the debate means like you're going to propose some solution to to a problem then another one another member of that group is going to give you another kind of idea to how to solve this problem and you and your partners and a as a group are going to develop one conclusion in order to have a strong conclusion uh, and a strong solve to this to the problem that teacher is is giving to the group and then the fourth is problem based learning as the name say as the name is saying the the learning is is developing the process of how to use uh, all the 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 steps that the steps and the guides that the teacher is giving you in the in your group so the students will ask who what where when why and how questions obtain needed information the students will ask a series of questions to build a knowledge so here the knowledge is constructed while you are developing the conclusion for this uh, problem that's why this is called problem based learning let's continue here i just added like activities we can use while working in groups let's look at them activities we can use while working in groups so for example here they are going to be sitting in small groups of uh, obviously you as a teacher need to to determine that a group is going to be in the same in the same uh, skills performance or as the rest of the groups because you cannot like just group the the ones that you consider the better ones so you have to basically group them in a way that you want to have a fair division of the class so for example if you have 20 students and of the 20 students you have five students that are basically um that are a basically um how do you, that are basically giving you more more solutions than the rest so you want to have these five introduce it in these four or five groups let's say of the 20 you're going to divide five groups of four okay so you're going to put each of these students that are like basically overlapping the the rest of the knowledge of the rest of the students on each of the group so they are going to help the group and also you want to have like kind of a leader of these groups so in this case you they are going to discuss discuss about the name of the animals let's say for example the next the next activity that you put it here is they are going to be talking about uh, the activities here we want to we we are saying that the activity of great fry ball etc etc so they are going to giving you the names of the activities that they are they are the persons of these pictures are doing here i just added as i said at the beginning of this video that i'm you have to be aware of the disadvantages unfortunately everything everything on this life has a disadvantage so it, this is not the exception but you as a teacher have to be like the the one the moderator who is going to be aware of these disadvantages so i just added four here in order to simply simplify this video and the first one is someone may to try take over of the group the second one is why people may not feel comfortable no individual thinking and loss of creativity i am not meaning that this is going to be like happening on each of your class groups no this is going to be happening rarely but is is important to be aware of this is embedded. For example, someone may try to take over the group. One person may take over, over control and not allow the others to share the knowledge. So that becomes to the people that are quiet and not, comfort, not comfortable to share their ideas to be like just quiet. And we don't want that for our activity. 
why people may not feel comfortable. As I said previously, some students are shy or reserved and feel awkward when working with others. No individual thinking. So while working in a group, there is no place for individual or independent thinking. It's but it is by no means a one-man show. So that means that we have to be to make sure that everyone on the on the class is participating. So in this way, we're gonna have like to propose also activities to the students where we can see the 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 work of each of the students. Let's say you can give to the students, okay, you're gonna talk about the animals. So one of you of your group are going to be talking one of the the skills of these animals, the animal that the group can select or choose, whatever. So they are going to giving you the these advantage, disadvantage, the skills, and all the things that that defines this animal. Okay, so the laws of creativity. Whenever you need to work as a group, group thinking becomes more relevant because of this reason, creativity has been stumped and saying it. The thing is here, the the, um, the loss of creativity is uh is one of our biggest problem here because me as a teacher has been looking this or each of the of the groups even when i was just a student i was looking at uh, one of the group can, uh, don't want to participate on anything so they are just giving you maybe money for the copies or something like that and this doesn't mean that they are working for the group so unfortunately we have that loss of creativity but we have to give as i said previously also one of these skills for each of the group so they have to show to the teacher that everyone here on the group were working on the same amount here i, I just make a check a checklist for example to show here on the video that you you want to have a, a a develop on communication creativity confidence on the students and you want to avoid the irresponsibility on each of them that's good. So as a conclusion, the activities can be used in many ways across the curriculum because the students have the opportunity to support each other uh, in, in the successful completion of the task or to review materials and prepare for assignment. Basically here you have my references and thanks for watching this video. I hope that these video helps you to interpret how to use these small groups and partners activities here i have a small question for you guys if you want to to answer this question so do you like to use small groups and partner activities in your classroom so you feel free to to answer this question and let's see on the let's see us on the next video thank you